We were in Morocco for the launch of the new Range Rover. Waited 10 years for a new Range Rover to arrive and here it is. I mean, it's a, it's a really important car, this. It's always been the ultimate, seen as the ultimate off-roader. And this one, so far, the only thing we've driven it on are the roads you see here, just sort of dirt roads. We haven't driven it on the road, but already it's impressive because it is a real luxury car. Um, one thing that has changed is the price. This car here, this is the uh, turbo diesel V8 in autobiography trim. This is a £95,000 car now, so it's really moved up market. We always thought the Range Rover um, was a luxury car. It was almost too cheap for what you're getting. But this one, massively more expensive, but incredibly well equipped. And for what we've done so far, I've been in the dunes, been over rock crawl, it still has all those sort of off-road features you expect of a Range Rover. And I can't wait to drive it on the road. One of the things that really has changed is the performance of the car. With this uh, turbo diesel V8, we're talking about a 140 mile an hour car here. It's six 0.5 seconds to 60, significantly quicker than the outgoing model. And most of the performance has come because it's a lot slipperier than it was before, so it goes through the air, so that's the high speed, and also it's a lot lighter. Um, the, there's a V6 model, it's, it's where it starts, 71,000, and they're saying that's 420 kilos lighter than the outgoing model, with the same performance as we've got from the existing car, V8 diesel. So big changes there structurally. It's a completely new car, this. Um, and I have to confess an interest here because I've bought five Range Rovers on the trot. And so I am summing up this car and thinking, well, do I want to buy this car? Is it a true Range Rover? Well, over the next two days, we're going to find out. But I'll take you inside because it's quite spectacular inside in this autobiography trim. So this is the top spec, this one. So autobiography, super soft leather, um, this finish, um, they tried to get rid of all the buttons on the car. Whether that's a good idea or not, I don't know, because it actually means that you have to go through a sub-menu and then sort of adjust things on screen. So it, it looks great, but I think it's a little distracting, but we'll wait and see how it, yeah, we, in the next couple of days, how it works. Um, all these um, blank screens, we saw it on the last generation Range Rover. So when, as soon as you turn it on, if I can probably do that, there we go, all comes to life. Um, and then in the rear, most of the cars equipped here, are these four seat options. So nothing like the previous Range Rover. The, the previous Range Rover, they used to have this bench seat, used to fold down, and it was sort of part farmer car, part posh car. You, it did both roles. But now, very definitely on the top models with this four seater option, this is a, almost a chauffeur driven car, fully automatic seats in the back, completely different car. One great feature I like on it though, is um, the glass roof. Um, it's almost a must have option. Uh, the only thing was, the engineers were telling me it weighs 52 kilos, adds 52 kilos uh, to the weight, and you think that's all in the wrong place. So what it does, the handling, we'll, we'll find out. But one of the other new tricks of this Range Rover has anti-roll technology. When we get on the, on the road, I can't wait to drive it on the road, it like the Range Rover Sport, um, it has the same sort of technology in this, and um, it gets rid of roll, which is one of the features, it always was a bit of a pudding. The previous Range Rover used to see it lolling around through the corners. It wasn't a star turn on road, even though it was terrific off road. There's some lovely details on this Range Rover. Um, it's a very clean design from the front. It has changed its perception. It looks like this one is, this is a Range Rover that's finally seen the inside of a wind tunnel. I always wondered if the other one ever actually saw one. But the detail on it is terrific. I love, one of my favorite bits is just around the headlight where they actually have the name. It looks like a lens on a, um, a 35mm SLR camera or something like that. Really nice details. If we go around the side, as you can see, it's a very big car. They're saying it's only um, 27 mil longer than the um, old Range Rover, but what it has grown is in the wheelbase. The, the distance between the wheels is significantly bigger, about 120 mil, and that's gone into this passenger compartment at the rear. And then just what they've done to try and um, sort of try and look to shrink it is these gills here. Now these used to be here, and it's where the engine used to breathe on the previous generation one. Now they're just the styling feature on the door. And Jerry McGovern said he put them there to actually shrink the door because that's a vast door, um, absolutely huge. And without that styling feature, it would look even bigger. Um, if we go around the back, again, it does look different from the rear. I don't think it looks quite as regal as um, the existing Range Rover. This is shrunk down. I know on mine, I can never actually see the roof, so I never actually bothered cleaning the roof on them, but now I can see the roof. I'm gonna have to clean the whole flipping car if I've got one of these. It's all electric now, this car. Up it goes, on this one. Excuse the truck, we are in the middle of Morocco. The, this is the only decent road we've found so far. 
Anyway, spectacular boot, press a button and it'll all fold away automatically. I think people are going to love that. Well, there we go, that's the new Range Rover. I'm going to spend the next two days with it. Let's see what it's like on road. Sort of launching this new car with this um, V6 turbo diesel. They, they claim the performance is the same as the outgoing car because of the weight saving. 420 kilo weight saving is on this example. And uh, I'm quite, I, I think this is going to be the one that everybody wants to buy because it's going to offer the most economy and you can't really tell that it is the V8. We looked round them in the car park and uh, there is no visual clue that you've actually bought, you can't even call it a poverty spec, but the V6, because this is, we're in the autobiography here. And it's still, a, it's a 90,000 pound car, even in V6 form. Once you only have to tick a couple of options like park assist or something like that. But uh, first of all, we have to get out of Marrakesh and this is, Morocco is a crazy place. Um, just the things you see on the road we've seen you know there's donkeys everywhere there's donkeys over there there's horses there's sheep on roof racks utterly mad and there's a i think there's just get out of america so they have these markets and i think there's a sheep market going on up here just chaos look there's one on a one on a moped who would carry a sheep on a moped but it's the sort of thing you see everywhere in morocco I can't get over that they strap them to the roof rack. There's one, there's a transit up there, sheep strapped down on the roof. I'm just, how can you get away with that? If you did that in the UK, you'd be locked up. Just nuts. We did a little bit of motorway, mainly off road all yesterday, up in the sand dunes and things. But on the motorway, one thing that struck me, how quiet it was. It's actually doing at 70 miles an hour, you're doing about 1400 revs. And that's the thing with this new eight speed gearbox, really drops the revs when you're cruising. And I think that's where the economy comes from, but it's about 50 miles per thousand RPM, which is so over geared, but it does make a very relaxing sort of way of travel. And we all know that's what Range Rover is all about. It's the, just a beautiful way of travel. There's always always this glass area, you have a great view out, command drive position, and uh, all those elements are still in the new Range Rover. But it's this, this promise of more luxury, and that's the thing I sort of think that's quite different with the previous Range Rover to this new Range Rover. So this has started, the luxury starts at a higher level. You've gone up a class of car. Previous Range Rover was you can, you can understand a sort of farmer spec one, but it had all this added leather everywhere and uh, it turned into a luxury car, but it was slightly utilitarian at its base. It was made to, to do work. This one doesn't feel like that. This one feels rival to Bentley. It started at a higher place. You can't imagine a sort of farmer spec Range Rover. And that to me is the difference between these two, the so-called 322 and now this, the 405 new Range Rover. It's a proper luxury car now. I say, this V6, I'm sure it's the one that's gonna um, sell. Behind the wheel, I'm an owner of a TDV8 at the moment, and I can't really tell the difference. And it's, if anything, it's slightly quieter than the V8. There's, there's a little bit of chatter coming through from the V8 that the moment is absent on this. I just want to do a bit more road driving on this car because, as I say, all we've really done on this launch is charge around the tubes, which is great fun. I don't see many Range Rovers doing that in real life. The other thing on this um, Range Rover, you get this um, roll control on the V8 models, and they've left it out on this V6, so that's the other thing that does feel slightly different. But it doesn't wallow at all like the old Range Rover. This is a very different driving experience. I don't think you're going to miss the anti-roll. And it adds quite a lot of weight. Yeah, after the, after the V8, this V6 doesn't quite have the performance. It is, you know, it could be on par with the outgoing model, but the, the V8 uh, diesel really feels quite quick. They quote a 6.5 to 60, and it always has torque on off and it, and it's just one of those cars that is just surprisingly quick. There is the supercharged petrol version, and that's pretty bonkers. That's down in the five seconds of 60 or something. It must be pretty special. 
But I'd say the big surprise in this V6 is I'm not actually missing that anti-roll technology just because it's, it just feels that little bit more nimble behind the wheel, even though I haven't driven it that far. This is part of the fun of being on a Land Rover launch. They like to muck about in rivers. the end of the drive now, we've just come over the Atlas Mountains. Extraordinary sight, we're up at, uh, I think it was 2,700 metres, so what's that, this must be 6,000 feet. Um, track on the way up, bumpy track, um, didn't see any snow where we were, we could see it on the mountains beyond. Um, Coke well, we're now just making our way back to Marrakesh. And after, we must have done three, 400 kilometres now. And the Range Rover, just looking at the New Range Rover, the new, the good bits and the bad bits. Um, some of the things I'm not so sure about. Um, it's a big car. We sort of knew it had grown, it's, but it's grown in, in width. And it's the one thing it didn't really need um, usability. You don't notice it out here, but I sense in crowded London you're going to feel that this is a pretty big car to park. Um, and then the sense of space inside is good up the front. But it's not quite as big in the back as you're expecting. This really long wheelbase, it always was very pinched, but if you get in the back of this, it doesn't feel limo-like. It feels sort of normal, but if you know, you're back in a long wheelbase XJ or something, there's acres of space. This doesn't have that feeling. And I think it's partly um, to do with the aluminium construction, because all the pillars, all the A, B and C pillars, are really thick and bulky. And it's, it's one of the downsides of using aluminium. You have to use bigger structure to get the same strength as steel with the new rollover test in America. Really, you need very chunky pillars to, to meet it. And, it. and it just slightly encloses on the cabin more than expect, particularly at the back. And this tapered uh, finish at the back doesn't have that sort of really glassy feel of a current rate, a previous generation Range Rover. What else? I'm not sure about them cleaning up the buttons. Um, I have a Range Rover at the moment, and if you go for something like the heated seats, it's just a, button, a, a knob down here, you just give it a twist, the heated seats are on. Now, I have to press a button to, for, say, I want the heated seats, go into the screen, press it several times to get whatever temperature I want, and then press it the screen again to come out of it to go back in the sat nav. So I've sort of lost buttons, it looks very clean, but I'm not sure that's an advance or not. Um, and they say they've cleaned up the buttons, but what they've actually done, either side of the screen itself, instead of having buttons, I've got icons I press. So yes, it's not a physical button, but it does the same job as a button. So their, their button count, I think, is a bit wonky as well. Other things, it's an expensive car. I say, its average price, they were saying last night, is in the 90s, 90 or 1,000 pounds. Um, that's a big jump up. Uh, previous generation at introductions of 55,000, yes, that was 10 years ago. But even at run out, a really top spec one was in the 60s, crept into the 70s. Now that's in the 90s, so it's a roughly 20,000 pound increase in price. Oh, we have a sat now. Um, so, yeah, price has really gone up. But then on the plus points, this really feels like an uber luxury car now. Um, previous generation had all the toys but it didn't quite have the full luxury feel that this has. This feels up competing with Bentley no problem at all. Um, I'm going to try and turn the sat nav off if I can. I'll go to sat nav, I've got to press all through the screens and I'll turn it off there, there we go. Yes, what we're saying, competing with uh, Bentley and possibly Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce Ghosts, I think, competes with this car. That's what this feel of this car, so it's a true luxury car now. Um, so that's probably the price justified. It's just a bit of a shock from where it was to where it is now. Um, the other thing I sense, 
I think it really does the economy. Uh, I think it's going to get a better MPG than the previous generation. We've been messing around in the hills, nothing for economy, but even so, we, we're in mid-twenties when I would expect to be in the teens. And there's this choice of engine. Now, I'm still in the V6, but we had the V8 yesterday. The V6 diesel is a very good car. Um, it feels like a real Range Rover. It has, what should we say, adequate power. Because um, it's not a sports car, this, but I don't feel underpowered. Just, it just lacks a little bit of punch. But with a stop-start, smaller engine, I'm sure it's going to be, you know, you're going to get 30 to the gallon, which in Range Rover language is spectacular. The V8 diesel does offer that extra punch. It's what you'll describe as surprisingly quick. Um, six seconds to 60, I think we mentioned it before. But uh, on the road, it always has that sort of overtaking power. Um, and yeah, it, it's going to be the choice if you like the sportier drive. It's a bit Range Rover Sport, V6, V8, same sort of feel. Um, all the sales are going to be V6, and I suspect in Range Rover it's going to be the same in the future. If, you, if you're in a country of cheap petrol, then obviously you have the supercharged version, and that's just plain bonkers. But um, so yeah, engines work really well, car works um, superbly well, real luxury feel. And the big thing about it, I think I've learned on these two days, this is a true authentic Range Rover. It still has that feel of sort of, you just float down the road, it's effortless for cruising, big glass area to look out of. So it's a true Range Rover. What I think is going to be fascinating is the previous generation was a single model lineup. There was no derivatives. Now we're going to have derivatives of this. So I expect in the future we're going to see a long wheelbase one. We're going to see a Range Rover Sport off this aluminium. And that one's going to be really quite sporting, competing with uh, Porsche Cayenne. But as the sort of ultimate car, Range Rover is still it. It is the most luxurious off-roader by far.